All right, guys, today we have more PlayStation news, rumors, and leaks to go over and discuss. We have quite a few exciting topics that we're going to be going over here today. So before we get into it, if you could do me a big favor, if you do enjoy these videos or if you end up finding it informative, please consider leaving it a like. It really helps them out more than you know. And if you are new here to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. We're starting here talking about some comments that Herman Holst made yesterday during the announcement that Bluepoint Games would officially become a first party PlayStation studio. He seems to be making it clear that they are going to continue to pursue quality studio acquisitions. And I think that this is certainly important to highlight because Sony has been on a roll when it comes to acquiring new studios. And I think that people are kind of wondering, is this something that they're going to continue to do? Or is it maybe gonna come to a stop now that they have blue point games and based off of what herman is trying to convey it doesn't seem like it's going to be stopping anytime soon and i think that a lot of playstation fans are happy to hear that and so this is reading from playstation lifestyle they say to the surprise of few people who have been following playstation studios progress over the last year Sony finally confirmed its acquisition of Bluepoint Games today. In an interview with IGN, head of PlayStation Studios Herman Holst stated that this was unlikely to be the last studio to join them either, but developers will only be welcomed into the PlayStation Studios family if they share the same quality first mentality. Bluepoint Games is just the latest team to become part of PlayStation Studios. Within the past few months, Sony has added Housemark, Nixus Software, and Fire Sprite. The latter then announced it had acquired Fabrique Games to join its own team, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Between the five studios, this has added approximately 500 personnel to the PlayStation Studios family, according to the escapist The Joy of Gaming host Shinobi602. It has been Sony's biggest year in terms of acquisitions, and this doesn't look to be stopping anytime soon. And so this is exactly what Herman Holst had to say. We are open always to building new relationships or bringing people in-house, but only if we adhere to the quality first mentality and the right kind of innovative content, new experiences, diverse experiences, because all of these teams, they share a lot, but they're also very different from one another. And that's what I really like. And I think that's what the PlayStation audience, the PlayStation fans deserve. It's that diverse slate of games coming out of PlayStation Studios. He later elaborated on what he meant by the quality first mentality. Quote, the way we look at our group of studios, and we now have 16 internal teams as part of PlayStation Studios, is very much the way we look at our games. It needs to be right. It needs to fit what we're about in qualitative terms. It's got to be the right games. Same with the teams. The teams stay have to have a very collaborative mindset. They need to be quality oriented. We're not buying teams just to be bigger. We're only buying teams because we feel that together we're going to make something that is going to be even better than if we did it separate from one another." End quote. Now, I have to say, I really like what Herman Holst is saying here. He's making it clear that Sony's not just gonna go out there and buy any studio, especially not just for the sake of being bigger and having more teams and increasing the total number of studios that they can go around saying, hey, we have X amount of studios. It's a quality first mentality. And in my opinion, that is critical because that is what makes PlayStation so great and so appealing to me and I think many others. And I think the way that Sony has been approaching their studio acquisitions, they can now back it up. You look at the teams that they've acquired so far, Housemark speaks for itself, absolutely a quality studio, a perfect fit for PlayStation. You look at Nixus software, that tells you that Sony cares about the quality of their PC ports. So again, it's a quality first mentality, and it's also going to ensure that they're not taking many resources away from their other internal teams. You look at Fire Sprite, a team that has clearly a ton of potential to do some great things. They're working on multiple big projects. They have a massive team of developers. They will undoubtedly help with VR as well, creating some VR titles. And then you look at Blue Point Games. Again, this is a studio where their reputation speaks for itself. And it just kind of gets me excited to think about what other studios Sony may be looking at and maybe thinking about approaching to see, hey, would you like to become part of the PlayStation Studios family? And I really do think that Sony taking this quality first approach will benefit them 
not only in the short term, but in the long run as well. In the short term, it's going to make it clear that they're not just going to buy anybody and that if Sony does happen to approach a studio and say, hey, we really like what you're doing. Do you want to be part of this prestigious team of studios that make some of the best games in the world? I mean, you're a development studio. That'll automatically make you feel pretty good, right? Make you feel kind of special. And it will benefit them in the long run because them ensuring that they're not just going to buy up any studio that's willing to sell or that's willing to become part of PlayStation Studios, it's inevitably going to ensure that we get some of the best games. There's going to be some serious quality control. And again, to me, this is the most appealing aspect of PlayStation. It's what keeps me here. It's what draws me to the platform. And I just am glad that they're taking this approach. I think it's the smartest way for Sony to approach studio acquisition. So you guys can let me know your thoughts about that down in the comments below. We're going to move on to the next topic. And this has to do with Blue Point Games and the projects that they are apparently working on. Now, I do have to let you know right off the bat here, you have to take this with a big grain of salt. This is an individual who is claiming to have inside information. And so it's best to remain extremely skeptical. But it is interesting because it's really all we have to go off of, and I could see some truth to this. So, Blue Point Games was officially announced to have been acquired by Sony Interactive Entertainment yesterday, and it's now emerged that the studio is reportedly working on two projects. That's according to a video game analyst, Millie A, on Twitter, who claims that one of the titles is a remake of a beloved game. However, she followed this up with a separate tweet stating that the remake is not Metal Gear Solid. The other project, as previously reported, is going to be an original project with the tweet claiming it will be similar in size to Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales. Now, I do find this very interesting because today we got an extensive report from VGC that claims Konami has certainly some pretty significant plans for Metal Gear Solid, and they apparently do not involve Blue Point Games. Now, for those wondering, I am going to make a separate video covering that. But for now, I want to focus on Blue Point Games and these projects they could be working on. This would actually make a lot of sense to me. Although, the one thing here that makes me extremely skeptical of this individual and what they're saying is Blue Point Games is a relatively small team. I think they said recently that they have about 70 employees and they will outsource when they have to and sony will obviously be able to help them with that now that they're a first party studio but it's just difficult for me to imagine a team that small working on two projects simultaneously now what we could be seeing is a situation where maybe they were already working on this remake of whatever this beloved game is and they're pretty close to being done or they're maybe just you know further along in development with this project than maybe we would expect. And because of that, they're already thinking about what their next project is going to be. And they already decided that it's going to be something original. Um, but another reason I do think there could be some truth to this and that we could ultimately see two separate projects from Blue Point is because one of the things people were claiming is, why would Sony buy Blue Point games if they're not going to utilize their expertise? And their expertise is just that, remaking games. In my opinion, there's very few that do it as good as Blue Point, and we know that Sony has an extensive catalog of games that could use remaking, so it really would only make sense that Blue Point would be used, at, you know, even if it means that they're going to be a two-project team one of their, you know, half of their team is going to work on remaking a game. The other half is going to work on original content. It is emphasized here that this original content is going to be much smaller than, say, a full AAA game. Again, there's a lot here that tells you this could be possible and it could be plausible. But I do have a difficult time believing that a team as small as Blue Point is going to be able to handle two projects at once. Maybe they will be able to. There's no doubt that they're going to grow significantly now that they're part of PlayStation Studios. So maybe this is what they pitched Sony. And Sony says, we like it. Let's do it. We'll help you grow. And we'll, you know, obviously support you uh, in any area where you need that support. And maybe the fact that they're now a PlayStation first party studio is what's going to make this a possibility uh, and a reality for them. So you guys can let me know what you think of that. What do you think this beloved remake is, if you even believe it? And what do you, what would you like to see, I should ask, 
from their original project. We're moving on to the next topic, which focuses on Spider-Man 2. We have some new information regarding this game. So it says here, Marvel Games executive Bill Roseman has revealed that Insomniac's Spider-Man 2 will be a little darker than the first game. He likened the comparison to Empire Strikes Back. If the first Spider-Man game was Star Wars, Spider-Man 2 is kind of our empire, Roseman said during the This Week in Marvel podcast. It gets a little darker. There are multiple foes. I can say the story very much continues and picks up from Marvel Spider-Man to Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales. I don't want to reveal too much, but it's the next big chapter. There are a lot of threads, a lot of characters that were in the first two games that you'll see here. Roseman also talked a little bit about Insomniac's take on Wolverine, though he didn't reveal anything and referred listeners back to the reveal trailer. If you go back and look at the trailer, the scene where you are behind Logan and he is at the bar, it is chock full of Easter eggs, he said. The internet detectives have indeed found some of them, but they have not found all of the Easter eggs. We will eventually reveal when Wolverine is aimed to launch. I would say for more, go back and study those trailers. They are packed with little details and Easter eggs. So really interesting stuff that's being said here. Uh, what he's saying about Spider-Man 2, to me, this makes a lot of sense. You know, I think that they're going to really ramp up some things with this title. And I like what's being said here. The fact that they're going to make it a little bit darker. I think that that's going to go a long way for this title, especially with the involvement of Venom. I have to imagine that they are, as I said, going to really kind of up the ante this time around compared to what we saw in the first game. And what's being said about Wolverine, uh, you know, he's basically just saying, if you want more information about what you can expect with this Wolverine game, go check out all of the Easter eggs. Go try to find all the Easter eggs that were contained within that trailer. So very interesting, very interesting. But we're going to move on to the next topic here, which talks about God of War. This is something that I wasn't expecting. I don't think anybody was expecting to find this out. But a big question that I think a lot of fans waiting for God of War had was, why exactly was it delayed, right? And obviously, we all kind of chalk it up to the same thing, which is, you know, they just need more time to work on the game. But now we have the uh, voice actor as well as uh, the mocap actor for Kratos, that being Christopher Judge. He took to Twitter to let everybody know that he is apparently the reason why the game was delayed. And so he says, 100 in my feelings right now, I need to be forthcoming. This has been approved by no one. To the beloved fandom, Ragnarok was delayed because of me. In August 2019, I couldn't walk. Had to have back surgery, both hips replaced, and knee surgery. They waited for me to rehab. He says there were no threats. Who do you think you are? Nothing but love and support. Sony Santa Monica has never said a word about the delay and what caused it. He's pretty much saying that studios can be uh, pretty rough, but this company from top to bottom should give us hope. What they did for the crew is way more that I can talk about, but I've said to all involved, it's not, he, he, he corrected this later on, but he meant to say that this is the classiest thing he's ever heard about in the business. Everyone involved in the God of War franchise puts their hearts and souls in every frame you see. I want to thank everyone that's allowed me to play. And so this was, again, a very unexpected uh, thing to be hearing from Christopher Judge. And it really does go to show that, um, you know, Santa Monica, and I put this in a tweet and I'll just say here, you know, they already had pretty much all of my respect as a studio and, you know, the people involved in this. Like you can tell that there's a lot of passion involved in the creation of God of War, and just when you think that your respect levels really couldn't get any higher, uh, you know, I hear something like this, and it's like, gotta give them credit, man. They put people first, and it, it's crazy to think that there are some people, believe it or not, who are responding negative to, negatively to this, which is kind of mind blowing. And I'm not even gonna, you know, bother entertaining that. But what I will say, and this is just for me, is that. I was already totally okay with the delay and the idea that they're just going to need some extra time to get the game where it needs to be. But especially now knowing that the reason why they had to delay the game is because of Christopher Judge and this obviously, you know, terrible thing here where he had to get both of his hips replaced and knee surgery. And they were like, you know what, man, take your time, rehab, recover. We'll wait for you. Uh, I think I speak for 
pretty much every God of War fan when I say that uh, we will wait. And, you know, people come first, health comes first. I would not be able to enjoy God of War Ragnarok knowing that, you know, somebody basically had to torture themselves and couldn't rehab properly because, well, they had to hit a deadline. I'd much rather wait for the game to be done. You know, put people first, make sure people's health is coming before anything. Uh, it's a game, right? It's a game. We can wait for it. And so I just thought that this was a really cool thing for him to reveal. I mean, it was definitely risky because you don't normally see individuals who are working on big projects kind of come out and say things like this. And he did say that this wasn't approved by anybody. But you know what? He's got to be a human being first, right? You know, and come out here and just thank the studio for being behind him. And um I think that, you know, the fan base is also 100% behind him as well as the studio. So definitely wanted to be sure to let you guys know about that. I thought that was awesome. We're moving on to the next topic, though, which talks about a uh, it's a report, actually, that talks about Twisted Metal. And apparently Twisted Metal is coming back and the game was actually handed over to Lucid, the developers of Destruction All Stars. Now, many of you hearing that uh, are probably not feeling great. And we'll talk about that, but let's go over the information first. This comes from VGC. PlayStation has handed its Twisted Metal series revival to Destruction All-Stars developer Lucid Games, sources have told VGC. According to the sources, the new Car Combat installment, which by release will be the series' first in over a decade, has started early development at the Liverpool UK-based studio. One person with knowledge of Lucid's plans suggested that the revival would be built around a free-to-play model partly in response to Destruction All-Stars' last-minute transition from a premium game to a PlayStation Plus title. The release is planned to coincide with an upcoming TV series in 2023, we were told. And so, I gotta say that this is, um, this is some pretty significant information, and it sounds very plausible. And I think a lot of Twisted Metal fans are very concerned at pretty much everything they're hearing about this because let's be honest destruction all-stars it, it's not really that great of a game i mean i think people are being a little bit too harsh on it like i hear people basically saying like oh man this twisted metal it's doa and i can understand why you would think that it's especially concerning when you hear that it's going to be free to play but i don't know i mean I feel like, and I actually went on record saying this, when I talked about Destruction All-Stars, I was just kind of confused. I'm like, why why isn't this just Twisted Metal, right? Because I feel like there's more they could do with it. One of the things I didn't really like about Destruction All-Stars was it just felt too basic. Like, there really wasn't any meaningful depth to the gameplay. The gameplay itself was okay, but I think that that was its biggest fault. I mean, the aesthetic of the game didn't really appeal to me to be completely honest but the gameplay itself it just really lacked depth and nuance and I feel like that's what it needed and my hope with this because I gotta admit I'm not the biggest Twisted Metal fan so to to me I'm just kind of like all right we'll see what happens with this game I'm, I'm not gonna write it off completely and just assume it's gonna be garbage um I, you know I think Lucid Games you know, they have a chance here. And, and that's the thing I want to focus on. Like they have a chance to really do something great if they can add that depth and add that nuance and stay true to what Twisted Metal is, you know, is known for and, and why the fan base loves it so much. If they can do that and they can deliver a free to play Twisted Metal game that just gets the basics right maybe there's a chance for this i find it so interesting that apparently one of the reasons they want to make it a free-to-play game is due to the negative response that they got for destruction all-stars i mean it, it makes you imagine that when this twisted metal game comes if it doesn't get canceled and you know sony's happy with what they're seeing it sounds like they're gonna focus over the next two years because apparently it's set to launch in 2023 alongside the tv show they're gonna focus on building a solid foundation for this game and that's what's going to make it free to play like it might not be the most content packed game and i actually think that this could work for it because if that's what their main focus is like get the foundation right make sure this feels like a good twisted metal game and just a fun game to play and then you can bring the content over time uh, since it'll be free to play it could work but 
I'm also very much skeptical. I'm just going to look at this as, you know what? I'll wait until I see it before I, you know, pass any judgment on it. And so we'll just have to see what ends up happening. But I'm certainly going to be interested to hear what you guys have to say about this. What do you think about Lucid making a Twisted Metal game that will be free to play? Do you have any hope for it or are you just expecting the worst? Certainly going to be interested to see what you have to say. Uh, I want to close out this video talking about something. I'm not going to spend too long on it because it's really not worth it, but it's still something I have to discuss. The PS5, not the Xbox Series X, but the PS5 is the first game on console to hit native 8K at 60 frames per second. Okay, and I feel like we have to go over this because not only is it just interesting to see this, but it really does kind of drive home a point that we don't really need to spend too much time on, but that you really can't go based off of on spec, you know, or uh, spec sheet comparisons, you know, on paper specs when it comes to consoles. It's really not going to tell you the whole story. So the tourist, which only recently came to PS5, actually marks a momentous occasion for the console, according to John Linneman and Richard Ledbetter from Digital Foundry, as it's the first console game to run at a native 8K resolution at 60 FPS. Perhaps no other on the box advertisement uh, is as optimistic as the big bright 8K you'll find on your PS5 box when you get the console, but it appears not to be so out of reach, at least in a sense. The tourist is running at a full 8K resolution, but internally, meaning that you're not actually seeing the output of 8k on your ps5 when you do play namely because it's unlikely that anyone actually has an 8k monitor and there's no function for the ps5 to output at 8k in the current firmware so the console literally cannot do it but just because you're not really seeing 8k that doesn't mean this isn't any less momentous it's still a step uh, of many towards a potential 8k standard across monitors and tvs somewhere far into the future the video even goes on to explain how the game running internally 8k actually benefits the final 4k output so you're still seeing a better and clear picture and i want to mention that it was made clear in this digital foundry video that the xbox series x version doesn't hit 8k it only hits 6K at 60 FPS. Now, does this matter overall? No, but again, it really just goes to show that when you saw all these people coming out of the woodwork last year that are saying the PS5 specs are weaker than the Series X and Mark Cerny doesn't know what he's doing and he doesn't know what he's talking about and he messed up, Sony panicked and that's why the PS5 is so overclocked and whatnot. These people who are saying these things have absolutely no idea what they're actually talking about. And that's why I always said, we'll wait to see the real world results because something tells me Mark Cerny does in fact know what he's doing with the PS5 hardware and that we're probably going to end up surprised at what developers can achieve with the PS5 hardware. It's a very highly custom console and you just can't look at the specs to know what to expect. I think this is absolute proof of that. So again, does it matter ultimately? No, they're both fine consoles. If you want a Series X, by all means, go buy and enjoy a Series X. You're going to have a fine time with it but if you're one of these people who really thought that like you know there was going to be some kind of massive difference here turns out no and we're seeing the first native 8k game running internally on the ps5 and not the series x regardless of what you may think of the tourist in terms of visuals and how demanding it is that's irrelevant to the point i'm trying to make so hopefully you understand that definitely want to be sure to include this, but that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. I hope you did find it informative. Be sure to leave all your thoughts down in the comments below. I will be interested to see what you have to say. Leave it a like, subscribe if you're new, hit the bell notification icon, and feel free to share this video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.